dispensation for this dispensation, the church age, is by grace through faith without works. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. That's a lie, not true. Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9, we'll start off with that passage. It does not teach once saved, always saved, or that we are saved without works for our present and future. The context is being saved from your past. See these verses of that chapter. Let's go through quickly some scripture facts. 1. God does not change. Malachi 3, 6. Next, to every nation you must fear God, work righteousness, believe in Christ, and must continue and obey the truth to have remission of sins and be accepted of God. You say, where's your scripture proof, Anthony? See these scriptures here. The passage in Acts, we will quote this passage last. Look them up and read them. Don't believe Anthony. It's in the book. Read it. That's New Testament, so-called church age stuff. Huh. Next, there is only one gospel. If any preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. See Galatians 1, 6 through 9. Quick definition of the word accursed. Webster's 1828. Doomed to destruction or misery, excommunicated, worthy of the curse, detestable, execrable. Now let's quickly quote that passage in Acts 10, 34-35 and verse 43. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, What did he say? Are you curious? Do you really want to know? First, let's eliminate what Peter did not say. He did not say, Of a truth I perceive that God gave multiple plans of salvation. Or, he saved people differently in various dispensations. No. He said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Verse 35. What did he say? Notice he did not say, But in every nation in this dispensation, we are saved by grace through faith, only, without works. Is that what he said? No. Read it carefully. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Wow. Verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Is Peter contradicting himself? From verse 35, no, he's proving that true belief involves working righteousness and fearing God. Interesting. Huh. This is after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, even after his ascension. It's been about, what, a couple months, I guess, after that? So how can these hyper-dispensationalists refute this? They can't. I wonder what people like Pastor Mike Reagan at Bible Believers Baptist Church, Pastor Larry Bartlett, if Peter Ruckman was still alive, I would ask him, or Sam Gipp, or any of these other hyper dispensational false teachers would say about a passage like this. I bet you they don't have an explanation. Brethren, I'm not naming names to be mean and cruel. I'm telling it like it is. People need to be called out and stop teaching this false doctrine. I used to believe that dispensational salvation foolishness. But when I got out of the church temple building and I started reading the King James Bible by myself, do you know what I found, brethren? Is that the Bible does not teach the dispensational foolishness. It doesn't. There are dispensations. And there are differences of rightly dividing the word of truth, but it has no bearing on salvation and how people are saved. No bearing at all. God has always been the same in every dispensation. After the fall, before the law, uh, look at this verse here. If there was no law before Moses, why would this verse state this? 
Hmm? I bet Pastor Mike Reagan and many other people don't have an answer for that. <laughs> hmm. Noah had to build an ark. That's a work. Wow. No evidence it was by faith and grace only without works. I mean, come on. Are you serious? Then the law. Okay, they were given the law. The ceremonial and the moral law in written form. But the moral law was always written on our heart. See Romans 2. Salvation for this dispensation is not by grace through faith only. Works are required. James chapter 2. <laughs> 